Hi, this video is about using very simple and easy to use data structures to improve both the safety and readability of your code. My name is Jamie Thompson and I'm a compiler engineer at the Scala Center. By following the advice in this video, you should be able to define data structures that make it impossible to create states in your program that cause it to crash. In this video, we will begin by introducing a game that we want to make. We will then introduce one possible way of representing the data structures in that game and why they may not be so safe. We will then rewrite these parts using data structures that improve the safety of the code while remaining concise and easy to use and read. So, let's make a game using the standard deck of 52 playing cards. In our game, the player takes turns to guess a random card. They are then awarded points based on how close they are to that card. So, a key question arises. How will we represent card in the code? Let's take a look at one possible representation of card and see why it might not be so safe to use. To declare a new data type in Scala, we use the keyword case class. A case class is a template that allows us to define similar values in our program. So in this line, we define a case class card. Card takes two parameters. One, rank of type int, the type of whole numbers. The other one, suit of type string, which is this type of textual values. For a first attempt, our definition of card might be suitable to use in our game. For example, we can define the card five of clubs by applying card to the number five and the string clubs. However, our definition of card is not so precise. For example, we can define a value that does not make sense. We can apply card to the number 16 and the string hammers. There is no such card as the 16 of hammers, so it does not make sense in our program. However, the compiler will still accept this value. We might not be expecting the 16 of hammers somewhere in our code, which will likely cause a crash when we are playing the game. This is not very good. In fact, we would only like 52 valid ways to construct a card, but our current definition has virtually limitless ways to make a card. For example, there are over 4 billion integer values and almost limitless combinations of ways to make strings. So what can we do to fix this? Well, with precise modeling, we can make illegal states impossible to express. So, how do we improve the precision of our data type? We identified earlier that both int and string are not precise enough to represent accurately rank and suit of a card. So instead, we will define our own data structures to represent them. Here, we see two number lines one each for both rank and suit. These represent the exact range of values we expect to be able to use to construct our card. These are perfectly represented in Scala using an enumeration. And here is how we represent them in the code. We use the enum keyword to introduce a new type to our program, rank. Inside of rank, we then use the keyword case to introduce the names of the values within our enumeration rank. And all these values have the type rank, and there can be no other value of type rank. Similarly, we do the same for suit. We can then revise our definition for card. It is the same as before, except we have substituted int for rank for our rank parameter, and we have substituted suit for string for our suit parameter. Now, to construct the five of clubs value, we instead apply card to rank.5 and suit.clubs. In this case, dot means we are accessing a member of a value. We can now see that it is impossible to construct our previous 16 of hammers value. 
the values 16 and string hammers will be rejected by the constructor of card because the types do not match. We can also use the dot notation to access the parameters of cards. For example, we see here to see the rank of the five clubs. We simply write dot rank and similarly for the suit. We then use the equality operator to show that indeed we have the same values as we passed to the constructor of card. With this new definition of card, we can instead think of card as like a point on a graph when you plot rank against suit. The space that we see on the screen here is the entire set of values that could possibly be a card and nothing else. To summarize, we have now seen how to make card more precise. In our scenario, we have reduced the number of possible values we can use to input to the constructor of card. This also means that we do not require any validation to prove that our card is correct. This means that we can reduce a lot of computation in our program. There are other techniques that can be used to improve the precision of data, but we will not cover them in this video. These involve validation of data after you've constructed it. Relevant search terms include smart constructors and opaque type aliases. For the final part of our video, I would also like to describe some more ways we can model data in Scala. Again, I will introduce scenarios and then show how we can express complex constraints simply. To begin, let's say we now wanted to know the color of a card. How will we do this? For our approach, we will associate a single color with each suit. So we declare a new enumeration to hold the colors of our suits, red and black. And then we modify the definition of suit that we saw earlier. We add to suit a parameter color of type suit color. We also add in front of that the keyword val so that color is accessible outside of the definition. We then modify each case of suit so that they are declared on one line each. Each case of suit then uses an extends clause to pass that associated value to the constructor of suit. Next, we can access the color of the five of clubs by first accessing the suit member of the five of clubs and then the color member of that suit. We can see here that it is equivalent to the color black. Next, let's say we expanded our game to feature online play. We've added a new game mode where several players take it in turns to guess a card. A player will want to know the current state of each player's guess. There are two cases. Either we are awaiting that player's guess and we need to display that we are waiting, or we have already got the value of their guess and we can display it. We can represent this using a single enum data structure. Let's take a look. We now declare a new data structure guess, which is an enum with two cases. The first case, awaiting, is a value. It signals that we are awaiting the player's guess. The second case, guessed, has a parameter of type card. This shows the case where we have already seen what the other player has guessed. Now, given a value of type guess, we do not yet know how to inspect it. It could be one of those two cases. In order to extract its value and decide what to do next, we use a pattern match. Simply, we use the keyword match, followed by a list of cases that match the definition of guess. Our game will then inspect the value guess and try and match it against one of these cases. For example, if we match the case guessed, then we have a card and we can display it. Otherwise, if we match the case awaiting, then we should display that we are waiting. Our multiplayer mode has been very successful, so we decide to add another one. This time, players take it in turn to guess the suit instead of the card. So to implement this, we decide to copy our card data structure and change it so that instead we are guessing for a suit. So we rename it to guess suit and replace the card parameter in the case guessed with a suit parameter. We can see that there's a lot of repetition here and we would like to avoid that. So to avoid repetition, we can instead make guess generic in the guessed case so that we can have a guess of any kind of value. To make guess generic, all we have to do is simply add a type parameter t using square brackets after the name guess. 
Then we change the guest case so that instead of card, we have a reference to that type parameter t. We then add parentheses on the awaited case so that we can have multiple values of the awaited case, but with different generic type parameters. We can then create two values of this generic guest type. First, we await a card and that has the type guest card. Then in the other scenario, let's say we have received a suit guess from a player and that has type guess suit. Because these values have different types, we are still precise and we cannot mix them. For example, if we are expecting a value of guess of suit, we cannot pass a waiting card because that has type guess of card. This type mismatch will cause a compiler error and we will not be able to build our game. Finally, I would like to show you some operations we can perform exclusively on enumerations. This is the case of an enum that only contains values without parameters. First, we use the statement import suit.star to import all the cases of our suit. We can then look up the value of spades using a string by calling suit.valueof and applying it to the string spades. We can also access all the values of suit in a sorted sequence by accessing the value suit.values. Each value of our enumeration suit has a unique ordinal and name. Ordinal here is the offset from the beginning of the enumeration. For example, diamonds.ordinal is zero because it is the first value. Next, we can access the name of the enumeration value by calling toString. For example, diamonds.toString is the string diamonds. Okay, let's take a look at a live demonstration of some of the techniques we've seen in this video. We're going to see that we can't make an invalid card and that we are protected by the compiler. In this window, in the web browser, I have gone to scasty.scalalang.org. Scasty is an interactive playground for using Scala. I have clicked on the build settings here and we can see in the target area that I have selected Scala 3. I am using Scala version 3.0.0 RC1. I have now gone back to the editor and we can see all the definitions that we have made today. The first action I take is to click save and this shows us that we can see that the program compiles and prints hello world. I will now write a definition for the five of clubs. I have written a definition for the five of clubs by applying card to the five of clubs. If I then click save, we should see that the program recompiles and prints hello world. I will now write an invalid definition for card. For example, the 16 of hammers that we saw earlier. By clicking save again, we should see that indeed we get two errors because both 16 and hammers do not match the types expected. This is what we see here. We say found 16, which is an int, and we required, were required a rank. Similarly, we found hammers, which is a string, but we were required a suit. I have removed those definitions of cards and now we will take a look at how our guess data structure is safe to use. I have added definitions for awaiting card of type guess of card and for guest suit of type guess of suit. These are both of different types, which I will now demonstrate.
I have added an invalid definition where we expect a guess of card and instead we pass the guessed suit value which is of type guess of suit. These do not match and we get a compiler error as we see here. So we found guessed suit of type guess of suit but we were requiring a guess of card. So in this video we have seen how we can use enums in Scala to precisely represent complex constraints with lightweight syntax. I hope that you can see that programming safely can indeed be easy and that you will find these tips useful. Thank you for watching.